So, Frank, which is, um, you've seen the posters for it, which basically the poster is uh, Michael Fassbender wearing that extraordinary Frank side bottom head. Um, Michael Fassbender came on the programme a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about the film, which I think everyone will agree is fairly hard to define. Last week, actually. Was it last week? Beg your pardon. So, just to give you sort of some parameters, it's inspired by John Ronson's time playing keyboards in the Frank Sidebottom's Oh Blimey Big Band. If you never saw Frank Sidebottom, he was a sort of uh, a, a, a legendary quasi-comic surreal figure who used to play in the Oblimey Big Band, used to sing like that, and he used to sing Anarchy and Timpoli, and used to wear this great big head. In the case of this, this is just taking um, that, uh, the head as a sort of jumping off point. This film is not a biopic of Frank Seibold, just to be absolutely clear. So essentially... It does what uh, the men who stare at goats did, which is to take John Ronson's factual writing and then to use that as a kind of springboard for a flight of fancy. You remember the men who stare at goats, which mm-hmm. was the you know, which was a fictional film, but had that lovely thing at the beginning, which had more of this is true than you'd think. Okay, so at the beginning, Donald Gleeson is this sort of Ronson stand-in. He's called his character is called uh, John Burroughs, J O N, you know, like John Ronson. He also has that kind of faux naivete, slightly bumbling shtick that John has. Uh, and instantly, I think John is a terrific writer. Um, and he winds up playing keyboards for the unpronounceable Soron S O R O N P after too many concerts. The whole, well, the whole point is their band's name is unpronounceable. Deliberately so. Yes, we've seen the film. You remember? There's a whole this joke about how do, how does anybody actually say that word? Nobody's quite sure. After the previous incumbent attempts to drown himself in the sea, he is asked if he would like to come to Ireland to play a gig. He says, "Yeah, that sounds great." Thinks it's just going to be for like a weekend. Ends up staying there for a year for rehearsals and recording of the new album. Throughout this whole period that he's there, Frank, as played by Michael Fassbender, and for most of the movie, you'll have to take my word for that. Or his word. Or his word, never takes the head off. Here's a clip. Can I ask you something? Sure. Why do you wear that? You think it's weird? Kinda. Well, normal faces are weird too. Well, the way they're smooth, 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 and then, you know, all bumpy and holes. I mean, what are eyes like? It's like a science fiction movie. Don't get me started on lips. Like the edges of a very serious wound. That's true. <laughs> but your head is still sort of intimidating. Well, underneath, I'm giving you a welcoming smile. Would it help if I said my facial expressions out loud? Well, maybe. Welcoming smile. Delighted look. Donald really does sound like Hugh Grant. Oh, do you he think? Really, really does. I mean, okay. I know we addressed this when we were talking about, 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 about time. time. Yeah, that same that same comparison was Good made. Voice, though. Yeah, but uh, although I think actually in terms of the sort of you know the sort of slightly shambling manner, there is there is a lot of John Ronson in there, which is probably the film's closest genetic link to John Ronson's time playing with Frank Sidebottom. Essentially what they've done, and it's John Ronson and Peter Strawn writing the screenplay, is that they've taken the frame of the Frank Sidebottom character and invested in it the sort of the method of Frank Zappa, of Frank Zappa, of Captain Beefheart recording um, Trout Mask Replica, which are the sort of famous legendary stories about holding the band hostage in order to get the thing right. And uh, as uh, Michael Fassbender was saying last week, Daniel Johnson, that sort of idea about genius and madness and, you know, being somehow rolled in the same way. And the film is actually very good on that subject of what the relationship between genius and madness may or may not be and it kind of questions a lot of the cliches of that idea when you look at the poster i think it's tempting to think that the film is just a kind of zany wild comedy and in fact again when michael fassbender was only saying that when he read the script he was laughing out loud in every other page i think that the 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 truthful thing is it's a tragic comedy it's no more um a frank sidebottom biopic than for example todd haynes's i'm not there was a bob dylan biopic you remember that had all these sort of different characters you completely disparate people but somehow somehow gave you a sense of Bob Dylan's career in this weird kind of kaleidoscopic way. Well, what this does, as I said, it's it's Beefheart and it's Johnston and it's Frank Sidebottom all sort of put together into this central character who's in the film is American and with whom uh, John Burroughs, the Donald Gleeson character, becomes completely sort of infatuated and fascinated. He also sort of falls in love with Maggie Gyllenhaal. He's like, is it Gyllenhaal or Gyllenhaal? I I think he said Gyllenhaal last week, didn't he? It's Gyllenhaal. Okay, well, that's what she said when she came in. That's what in. she said, yes, and Michael Fassbender said Gyllenhaal, but he, 
Well, that's anyway. Now I'm... She's so she's in the band. One of the decisions that they make, which is very good, is to actually have the band playing the music. So the the music has this kind of strange organic feel to it, and she's playing the theremin. Which, and when we said we asked Michael Fassbender, it was amazing because playing the theremin is really really hard. The film that was the point at which I knew that you were going to love the movie. Well, that there was a theremin yes. being yeah, fine, fine. The film's directed by Lenny Abramson, who is. I think a really exceptional director and there's a connection here between this and for example Adam and Paul which is this kind of Beckett influenced tale of these two sort of misfits on the very edge of civilization there's an awful lot of waiting for Godot in that and it's again it's sort of tragedy comedy and it's profound but it has a comic register but there is tragedy in there and most recently he did what Richard uh, did he's somebody who's very good at doing borderline behaviour, people on the very sort of edges of you know, of acceptability. He also has a terrific ear for that move between comedy and tragedy. I mean, essentially, as the film plays out, there's a tonal shift that it goes from a sort of major to a minor key, and it happens so subtly and so gently that it doesn't feel like in any way manipulative or jarring. And actually, what you take away from what I took away from Frank was... It's surprising just how moving it is. And that's not to say there aren't plenty of laughs on route, because there are. I mean, really strange. And when I first saw it, the only thing I could think to say was, you know, oh, blimey. Because it is one of those, blimey, what have I just watched? But the really... The, re the really impressive thing about it is that it goes from the comic register to the tragic comic register into this something which is c profound and melancholic and genuinely heartfelt. The songs work terrifically. Steve Relix is a terrific composer, and they go from, you know, from the the sort of the oblique, which is that song, but Lone Standing Tuft, which is this ode to a stray carpet tuft, or Frank's most likable song, which is this kind of just weird, wacky, jokey song. <laughs> Maggie Gyllenhaal says, that's your most likable song. People will love it. And then at the very end, I Love You All, which we played a little bit of when Michael Fassbender was on here, and which is already becoming something of an indie classic. And I give it a week, bands will be issuing, you know, cover versions of that song. And you start out laughing, and you know, because the whole point about the, the, the Frank side bottom head is it has this sort of ooh, slightly astonished, slightly askance look. And you start out looking at the movie with that face. And then as the onion layers get peeled away, your expression changes. And, it, and I think it genuinely becomes something profound and moving. And I think it's a really, really impressive film. I think tonally, you're in the same territory as, for example, Todd Haynes' Superstar, which was the, the Carpenter story told with Barbie dolls, or that weird movie Brothers of the Head, which was a just strange little sort of off-the-wall British uh, mockumentary. It sits in the great pantheon of genuinely unexpected and properly intelligently strange and offbeat pop movies. The music works really well. The performances are terrific. I know it's not for everybody, but then neither are the people that inspired it. Well, I was going to... Well, ask you precisely that because you were saying weird strange offbeat the cultural reference points that you mentioned frank cybottom obviously daniel johnson captain beefheart yes a lot of people won't get that yes anyway. and I, I i mean i understand entirely as i'm saying i mean it's certainly one of my favorite films of the year and i i'd be really surprised if at the end of the year it's not up with that bear in mind my favorite film of last year was good vibrations which was a film that not everybody saw by quite some distance but i think if you're in any if you're in but any could, way... could be enjoyed by everybody. Well, I would say that Frank could be enjoyed by anybody. I mean, I, because, I, you know, because I can't see what's not to enjoy. It's well-written, it's well-played, it's got heart, it's got wit, it's got edge, it's got poignancy. It's, you know, dark when it needs to be, and yet when it, when it needs to be just kind of absurdist. I mean, it is that lovely absurdist thing that through the, you know, through the cracked version of reality, you get to see something which is a, which is a created truth, which I think works really well. I think anyone could see it, but I do understand, even as I'm saying that, that it's not, you know, it's not going to knock Spider Man off the top of the off the top of the or indeed Bad Neighbours. But if everybody went to see this rather than Bad Neighbours, frankly, the world would be a better place.